So we have successfully rebuilt two programs now. We won a championship with the Wisconsin Badgers and the Arizona State Sun Devils, but both of those were Power 5 schools and we want more of a challenge. So we are moving into Group 5 schools now and this rebuild is going to be with Fordham. Since we're at a smaller school, our objectives will be a bit different. In five seasons, I want to be able to win a regular season championship, win the conference championship, get invited to a bigger conference, sign at least one four-star prospect or better, and make the Sweet 16. I think that would definitely constitute as a rebuild build for a school of Fordham size and notability. So to start season one, we would accept an invitation to play in the El Coliseo in Puerto Rico in the preseason tournament. And this team was projected to finish 12th in the conference by ESPN, but at least we did have 140 recruiting points and five scholarships to work with headed into this season. We would also have a tough schedule here in season one with a key matchup going up against number 16 Ohio State on the road early on. But before we worry about Ohio State, we had to open up the year against Moorhead State. And things were not looking great for us as we went down by two with less than a minute to go. We would have a chance to tie it up late, but Sheffield would get hit with the la f you chase down block to seal the game for Moorhead State in our season opener. So after that loss, now it was time for us to worry about Ohio State. And honestly, we really shouldn't have worried about it because we knew there was no way we were winning this matchup. I was honestly surprised we were even close to scoring 60 points on the Buckeyes defense this game. But they showed us why they are one of the best teams in the nation and would end up trouncing us by 31 points and we would start off the year 0-2. On the bright side though, we would sign our first prospect of the year in two-star shooting guard Anani McBride and three-star center Jason Buchanan who would be a huge pickup for this program was so close to signing on the dotted line with us as well. But it was time to get back to basketball in the Puerto Rico tip-off tournament. As we were in a tight one with the UCF Golden Knights here in the first round of the tournament, they would try to tie it up with under 20 seconds to go and would manage to get to the free throw line late in the game. Corliss Sexton would knock down the first one for the Golden Knights and would knock down the second one as well no problem to tie it up at 75 apiece. After we missed a shot, Bo Wynn would drive in and draw a foul for UCF again and he would go to the line looking to seal this game potentially with a two-point lead, but he would end up missing the second free throw. This would give us 2.1 seconds to work with as Grant Richards would come down off the inbounds, take a last second shot, and he would knock it down for us to win this first round game. This shot from Richards would send us to the second round against Santa Clara, which wasn't looking too good for us. We would try to make a comeback late as we were down by 10 with less than a minute to go, and we would eventually cut that lead down to only six, but we would not be able to complete the comeback and Santa Clara would end up knocking us out of the preseason tournament here in round two. Even though we lost, we still played a lot better this tournament than I expected this young team to play. And they held their heads high as they looked to pick up a win the next night back at home against Jackson State. And this was a must win for us as three-star prospect Jason Buchanan was visiting this game. And it would be another close one that would come down to free throws at the end of the game. And even though Jared Howard missed the second one, we were able to turn it into a three-point play, and that offensive rebound would help secure this big-time win against Jackson State for us. And sure enough, after that win, Jason Buchanan signed on the dotted line, becoming our first three-star recruit we signed this rebuild. We had two games left in the preseason before we started Atlantic 10 conference play, and we wanted to make sure we were ready to dominate when that time came. Our team played their best game yet against Delaware and picked up a huge 24-point blowout against the Blue Hens, but unfortunately, we wouldn't continue that play against top 25 team Butler. They dominated us in every aspect of the game all night long in Coach Husky's first nationally televised televised game with the Rams, and they showed us exactly why they were ranked in the top 25 and we weren't even close to being ranked. Coach Husky managed to sign one more recruit in two-star small forward Daniel Johnston, and headed into conference play, we finished the preseason with a 6-8 record. Not bad, but not great. Our first Atlantic 10 game was against Dayton, who had been ranked in the preseason top 25 polls coming into this year. And although they weren't ranked anymore, a win over these guys would be a great way for us to start conference play as a confidence boost. And that is exactly what we were able to do as Coach Husky helped coach his team to a 66 the 61 victory over the Flyers to start his first season of conference play here at Fordham. But his team was snapped right back into reality as Rhode Island handed us an embarrassing 93 to 60 blowout loss at home the following night. So we needed to get back on track and we were looking to do so on the road against the Colonials of George Washington University. As with 30 seconds to go, Jared Howard would be sent to the line for the Rams and once again he was only able to hit one free throw for us. But even with him missing, our lead was too large for the Colonials to come back from 
from, and we would hop back on the W Trail with a nine-point victory over them here in D.C. And to close out our first month of conference play, we had a matchup against top team in the conference, Duquesne. And obviously, it looked like the DoorDasher who walked onto the court seemed to affect us tonight as we seemed to be powered up by plenty of Big Macs and managed to get an 83-69 to win over Duquesne. Our last month of conference play was almost all rematches, so I wanted to try to highlight teams we hadn't played yet, and we had a close one here against the Richmond Spiders. Once again, we were sent to the free throw line in clutch time, and sophomore Grant Richards was able to knock both of them down for us when he needed to, and we would hold off the Spiders at home to walk away with a six-point victory. We would double down at home with another six-point victory the next night, this time over the Charlotte 49ers, and to close out our season, Grant Richards would come up huge with another game-winning shot to give us a 62-61 win over St. Joe's to win our regular season finale. We would finish 6th in the conference, much better than the projected 12th place, and have a first-round matchup against Duquesne in the conference tournament. And this time, instead of going to the court, the DoorDasher came to our team hotel apparently, as we seemed to have had too many Big Macs and Whoppers the night before this game. And because of that, Duquesne would knock us out of the conference tournament and this is how season one would end for us. So it was time for us to start the off season and hope for some better results next year. In the regular season, we would end up signing one three-star in two two-star prospects, but we would be losing six members of our team due to graduation and one player transferring. In off-season recruiting though, we managed to sign two more players, including a three-star point guard in Cameron Daniels. And once again, we were invited to Puerto Rico for a preseason tournament to start year two. This year, we were expected to finish sixth place in the conference, a step up from 12th, I guess, but we wouldn't have any scholarships available for recruiting until the next off-season, unfortunately. To start off year two, we traveled down south to take on Florida A&M in our first game of the year. They would try making it close and making a comeback late in the second half with some three-pointers, but Grant Richards would seal the deal for us with late free throws, and we would open up the season with a 10-point victory over AM on the road. Next up was a road trip to Wichita State, which was always a good test for any mid-major program. These guys set the model that we wanted to follow as a mid-major program, looking to build up major success in basketball. And it was refreshing to see how well our team stacked up against the Shockers in this matchup, and we would come away with a big 71-56 victory over them on their home court. It was time to try our hand again at the Puerto Rico preseason tip-off, and our first round matchup was against Colorado State. This was an easy victory for us and sent us straight to the second round of the tournament where we faced off against Humes or Umes however you pronounce it. And once again, we would walk away with an easy victory this time in the second round, where we would find ourselves in the championship game against the Arizona Wildcats. Although these guys were never a problem for us in our Arizona State rebuild, this Fordham team isn't quite as good as those Sun Devil teams were yet in this rebuild, but we kept it close, but would still end up losing to the Wildcats, as unlike Troy Bolton and his Wildcats team, we couldn't seem to keep our head in the game. So back to preseason action, and we were playing host to a close one against the Salukis. A clutch three from Braxton would give us the lead late in the game and all we would have to do would be to hold on to it as Southern Illinois would get a chance to win the game here but their shot would be off the mark. And so one month into our second season and freshman center James Buchanan was already averaging a double-double for us and he would look to continue that through this next month of preseason play. As we were down by three to Siena and Richards had a shot to tie it up but his foot was on the line, so Sienna would get lucky and end up winning this one by one point. And we would look to bounce back after that loss with a win against Louisville at home. And after some late free throws down the stretch, we would do just that and defeat the Cardinals 73-64 on our home court. Headed into Atlantic 10 play, we were the current pick to win our tournament now, as we were sitting at the top of the conference with a 12-2 record this year so far. Conference play opened up with a game on the road against Temple, and the Owls would try to make a comeback late in this one as they were down by 10. But our high-powered offense was just too much for them to handle late in the game, and we would open up conference play with a victory over Temple. St. Joe's gave us problems last year, and that still continued into this year. Richards would have a chance to win this one for us, but his shot would be off the mark, and we would take our first Atlantic 10 loss of the season to St. Joe's. But we would get revenge in a major way against them, as the following matchup at home would be a huge blowout victory for us, and we would win 84-46 in the rematch against St. Joe's. Yet again, Duquesne seemed to be giving us problems 
problems again here in year two, and this game was not getting any easier for us, as they would run out the clock and give us another defeat, 75-62 to this time. We wanted to close January out on a good note, though, and Charlotte was giving us a run for our money in this one. It was once again up to Richards at the free throw line for us, and after knocking them down, we would come up clutch with a victory against Charlotte. As after the month of January, we were still in first place of the conference, and we would look to continue that success with a game against Xavier to start the month of February. Despite their late game efforts down the stretch, we were able to walk away with a double digit victory no problem over the Musketeers. But we ran into another team that continually has given us problems as well. Rhode Island was up by double digits late in this matchup, and we would eventually take one of our worst losses yet of the season. Despite that loss, we were now ranked 21st in the country, and we were looking to get revenge against Rhode Island on their home court. Richards would come up big with a late layup to take the lead for us, and once again, would knock down some clutch free throws for us when we needed it most, and we would manage to split the season series with Rhode Island as we picked up this victory. We would finish the regular season ranked 20th in the media polls, and also managed to win the regular season conference title for the Atlantic 10. That is one goal of this rebuild we can knock off the list. So now it was time to see if we could win the conference tournament. First round was an extremely close one against Xavier, and even though we beat them easily in the regular season, we were going to OT in this one. Xavier would strike first in the overtime period, but we would take the lead late and manage to extend it to a five point lead. Xavier would not go away though as they would take the lead with 10 seconds left and we would get a last second shot off but we could not get it to fall and Xavier would end up pulling off the huge first round upset and just like that we were out of our conference tournament as the one seed. We still had a shot to make the sweet 16 though this season but it was not looking likely in this game against Southern Illinois. They almost beat us the first time we played each other this season and this time they would beat us here in the NCAA tournament first round as we would be sent home packing to end the second season of this rebuild. So now it was time for another crucial offseason for us, but before that started, we received and accepted an invitation to the ACC Conference, which would be another objective we could mark off our rebuild list. With no scholarships, we had no regular season commits this year, and freshman Stefan Mavalson was transferring due to playing time. With us being in a bigger conference, we did get invited to the Old Spice Preseason Classic to start year three, and we had a pretty good outlook for what this young team was going to look like going forward. We had four new scholarships headed into this year with our biggest recruiting budget yet, but in turn had our toughest schedule yet as we got ready to take on the ACC in year three. We started off our third season with a game against Kansas State, and this is definitely the way we wanted to get this third year started as we walked away with a huge double digit victory over the Wildcats to start the year. At this point too, our alumni association had given us a brand new practice gym that was only going to make our team better as well now that we were in the ACC, and we would need that extra help as we were getting ready for the Old Spice Classic Tournament. We took care of business round one against Old Dominion with absolutely no problem, and our team looked strong against a solid Oklahoma team in the second round. And once again, we took care of business against the Sooners, and that win put us in the championship game against Penn State. The Nittany Lions were absolutely no match at all for us in this game, and we would start our season by winning the Old Spice Classic Tournament. Our very next game was a rematch against Penn State on their home court, and once again, we would handle this Big Ten opponent with no issues. We walked away with yet another huge victory over the Nittany Lions, and at this point, we had managed to sign three new three-star recruits to the team as well, and we were ranked in the top 10 for the very first time ever. That wouldn't last long though as Oklahoma came through town looking for revenge in this matchup, and they would get it as they defeated us pretty easily as we would drop this one 97-80 to the Sooners on our home court. One last game before conference play started, and it was a close one for us. Former conference opponent LaSalle was putting up a fight down the stretch in this one, but we would manage to hold on and pull out the close victory against the Explorers. Headed into ACC play, we were sitting at 12-2 on the season, and sophomore James Buchanan was quickly becoming the star of this team. Our first game was against Georgia Tech on the road to start conference play, and even with them missing this chance to tie it up late in the game, and Grant Richards giving us a three-point lead with under 20 seconds to go, the Yellow Jackets would tie it up and send us to overtime. We would start pulling away from them though late in the overtime period, and we would squeak out a win by three points to open up conference play this year. A nail-biter against Duke would come down to the last shot in which James Buchanan came up with the game-winning block for us as we would try to continue this hot streak back at home taking on Clemson for the first time, and Richards would help seal this game at the line late for us, and we would continue our winning ways in the ACC over Clemson here at home. This game definitely was not going the way I expected it to go for us, and I mean that in the best way possible for our team, as we would end up blowing out Miami by 22 to close out the first month of conference play in the ACC. We were holding our own at second place with a 6-2 conference record, and James Buchanan was even a candidate for player of the year as a sophomore. Things quickly fell apart for us though as we took one of our worst losses of 
this entire rebuild in North Carolina. So we had to bounce back at home against Duke, and we would do just that with a dominant win this time over the Blue Devils. And once again, we were taking on the Tar Heels at home this time. And even though it was a bit closer, we still couldn't pull off the win against North Carolina. But we would at least close out the regular season with a win over Miami at home. We would finish the season ranked 20th in the media poll at the end of the year, and would even have two All-American first team players on our team. We would end up drawing the third seed in the ACC Conference Tournament, but unfortunately, sixth seed Clemson would end up upsetting us in the very first round, and that is how our first ACC season would end for us. However, we still made it to the NCAA Tournament, and as a seventh seed, we were taking on Florida State. It was yet another ACC matchup for us, and this time, we would walk away with a victory to move on to the second round, where Kentucky was waiting for us in the round of 32, and we had still yet to make the Sweet 16 in this rebuild, and it looked like it was going to stay that way for us at the end of year three. Sophomore Cameron Daniels decided that he wanted to transfer in the offseason, but we would manage to sign two four-star prospects for the first time. That's another objective that we can knock off our rebuild list. We were asked to defend our Old Spice Classic title headed into year four, and our team was projected to finish fifth place in the ACC this season. We had an even bigger recruiting budget to work with this season, as well as five scholarships, but we had our toughest schedule of the rebuild yet headed into this season. Despite this extremely tough schedule, we continued to beat very good teams throughout the preseason. This success would continue and land us in the top four national rankings early on in the year. Throughout the preseason, we proved that we were one of the best teams in the nation, and we were entering conference play with a 12-2 record for the second straight year. The Rams are ranked fourth in the nation, led by true freshman John Torres, with Jason Buchanan in contention for National Player of the Year yet again, and Coach Husky in the front runner spot for Coach of the Year. If we could continue this success, we could win the ACC this year. We were beating good teams, even if some of the games were closer than we'd like, and we were able to continue the success we had found throughout the preseason. This would help us win the ACC regular season title here in year four, and James Buchanan would finish fourth in voting for player of the year, and Brian Crockett would take home freshman of the year for us. We would have a first round matchup against Maryland coming up, and we completely dominated the Terrapins from start to finish, as we would walk away with an easy first round victory. UNC surprisingly gave us no trouble at all in the second round of the tournament, and neither did Duke in the championship game, and we would finally win our first conference championship of the rebuild here in year four. We can knock that one off the list now as well. Time to see if we can make it to the Sweet 16. Our first round matchup was an absolute demolition of Coppin State, and our second round matchup went the exact same way against St. John's. Finally in the Sweet 16, and it was a rematch against UNC, and just like we had done in every matchup this year, we would beat the Tar Heels again to move on to the Elite Eight, and it was a rematch from last year's opponent we lost to in Kentucky, and none other than James Buchanan would seal this one for us at the line, and we would be headed to our first ever Final Four. Michigan State surprisingly put up absolutely no fight at all, and a double-digit victory sent us to the national championship against Kansas, where once again, we had a ridiculously easy matchup, and we managed to win the national championship in year four. So with all of our goals complete, we have officially rebuilt the Fordham Rams.